It's the macabre thriller taking the world by storm. Squid Game, the latest South Korean cultural export. Since premiering on Netflix last month, its dazzling visuals and moments of stunning brutality making it the number one streaming show in over 90 countries and climbing. Squid Game is about a group of down-on-their-luck contestants who are in so much debt, they end up risking their lives competing in life-or-death versions of classic children's games like Red Light, Green Light. At stake, survival and a $38 million cash prize. The show's popularity wielding an immediate impact on the cultural zeitgeist. Halloween masks and costumes already popping up on sites like Etsy and Amazon. Sales for white band slip-ons, similar to the ones worn on the show, spiking 7,800%. Language learning app Duolingo reporting a 40% increase in the U.S., with new users wanting to learn Korean. And Squid Game's challenges going viral on TikTok. Yo, wait, I'll be right back. Let me just get another cookie. As people attempt their own versions of some of the typically Korean games. Even Tonight Show host Jimmy Fallon doing his own cookie challenge before interviewing the cast on his show. I think that the mania for Squid Game is both really unprecedented and yet at the same time, it's something that we have been building up towards as a culture. People are venturing more into stuff that they might not have before. This is my sister. And while the show is on track to surpass Bridgerton, Netflix's most watched series of all time, there is some backlash in South Korea as the show highlights the desperate economic inequality, lack of affordable housing, and the ever-present pressure for perfection, all hitting a bit too close for comfort. The social issues with Squid Game are both very Korea-specific and yet I think probably globally specific. There's a character who represents undocumented immigrants who are easily economically exploited. There is a character who represents elderly poverty. There's a character who went to the best university in Korea and turned to financial crime. And yet I think those are all stock characters that people can really see represented in their own societies. If some Korean viewers find the social critiques too close to home, I think that that makes sense. Nonetheless, Squid Game is the latest in South Korea's growing global cultural influence. Movies like Oscar winner Parasite, K-Beauty, and pop phenomenon BTS. All contributing to a worldwide appreciation for Korean tastes. In the three weeks following the show's premiere, model Jung ho Yun, contestant 67 in the series, has grown from having 400,000 followers on Instagram to an astounding 19 million, even becoming a brand ambassador for Louis Vuitton. Squid Game's water cooler conversation spurring debates over the best viewer experience for non-Korean speakers. I'll do anything you tell me. Whether the show's translation is more accurate in locally dubbed versions like Spanish Voy a hacer todo lo que tú me digas. or German Werde ich auch alles machen, was du willst. or more nuanced in subtitles. Taika Watiti, Oscar winner and Thor Love and Thunder writer and director, even tweeting, you don't have to watch Squid Game dubbed in English. The themes and violent subject matter of Squid Game resonating with viewers who may be looking for an escape from a world that sometimes feels out of control. I think it's great to have as much access to cultures and TV shows and art products that are not our own. And 